Over the years there have been evil companies in the world, companies like East India Company, EIC, which was a major slave trader and a company which single-handedly Talibanized India and destroyed Indian education, knowledge, martial arts, manufacturing and agriculture. Then there have been companies like Monsanto and Enron which were evil and planned to rule the world by controlling food and energy. These companies also have an ideology that poor people have no place on this earth and its resource. If you think Monsanto and Enron are evil then meet the new kid on the block, Uber. In fact Uber will make Monsanto and Enron look like saints. Uber is one company that is more evil than Monsanto and Enron combined. It is equal in intent and purpose perhaps only to East India Company. Uber has created drivers who are called partners but treated like slaves with enough food for them to survive the day and continue to earn for their master Uber. It might appear to a layman that the drivers have a choice of not working with Uber and networking on their own. But then technology and governments have been misused and manipulated by Uber on such a scale that a driver working on his own is unable to succeed. Today any driver not linked by Maru, Ola or Uber app is getting almost no work. Earlier the slaves used to work on plantations sites today they work in Uber taxis making their masters richer and richer. Many Uber drivers boast to their customers that they get paid well but in reality they are ashamed to reveal the truth. Uber pretends to be the world's biggest taxi company but, in fact, it is nothing more than a street smart thief. That's one of the reason it is a taxi company without proper taxi cabs or a phone number to call to complain. All of its hiring and training is done by third-party companies called Uber Deuced. Earlier Uber used to be called Uber Cabs, but within couple of years changed its name to Uber Technologies. It likes to be known as an IT company rather than a cab hailing company although its main business is taking commission from taxi hailing and food delivery. Uber is a company that does not have a single phone number to call in case of problems. All its operations everywhere in the world is controlled out of some call center. All your queries have to be sent by messages from the app and Uber call center responds by messages or emails using prefixed answers. This doesn't solve all problems of drivers or riders. But it is perfect for Uber because nobody knows which corner of the world is its call center operating from. There are mirrors within mirrors, and smoke screens within smoke screens at Uber. Has it already started to stink? Wait there is more. Uber works like a Ponzi scheme company. Do you know what's a Ponzi scheme company? Well it's a company that tells you, it will double your money in the next 6 months if you give them 5000 today. At the end of the term they don't give back your money under some pretext or another. That's exactly how Uber operates. We will come to that in a while. Let's first understand what is Uber and how it operates. Uber as a company was founded in USA by Garrett Camp and Travis Kalanick in 2009. It came to India in 2013. As per their business in India people or companies can apply to attach their cars with the company. Uber goes through their documents to check if they have proper legal vehicle registration and driving license. Once approved the vehicles can download the Uber Partner app on their 4G smartphone, with data, and if they go online they can get ride request. The riders can get the taxi by using their smartphone application to request a taxi. This request is sent to the nearest driver who can accept your request. On his acceptance you can get his approximate time of arrival to your location. But Uber doesn't want this simple equation of hailing taxi at normal rates. What it wants to do is to cheat you off your money by getting you to pay at a higher rate for the same normal service. This is done by surge pricing. 
the riders get cheated less than drivers because at the maximum riders do about 2 or 3 taxi rides a day but almost all drivers do about 20 rides daily and thus the drivers get cheated 10 times more than the riders by Uber. So how much does the Uber driver make in a month? Let's calculate. Uber requires you to have at least a comfortable car costing rupees 750,000 car. Say a Maruti Tsire. Because the life of this car in Uber is for just 5 years, the car owner needs to recover his car investment within this period. Divide rupees 750,000 by 5 years and then again by 12 to get the monthly installment of the car. This is around rupees 12,500. The cost of insurance of this private taxi is around rupees 1,000 per month. Fuel for running approximate 250 km per day comes to around Rs 19,200 per month. Maintenance of the car including 10 engine oil and change, tire, battery and brake pad replacement, etc. would come around Rs 10,000 per month. Salary and food for the driver is around 18,000 per month then finally comes the car owner profit of at least Rs 15,000 per month. Only after this is Uber entitled for its rupees 15,000 profit. If you total all of it the amount is rupees 90,000 per month. This is the minimum fare collection for a taxi doing 7,500 km a month. Uber usually promises the car owner rupees 150,000 but gives only around rupees 56,000 which is a loss of rupees 34,000 per month. The sad part is that Uber could well have given him that rupees 1.5 lakhs and earned it exactly the same profit and that would have been empowering and uplifting. But instead it thinks that it is necessary for the baseline of the company to keep the driver, car owner poor. Charge number 1 Uber hates to pay the government taxes and tries to escape being taxed, same like East India company who wanted special status that of non-tax paying company as if doing some kind of charity to India. Phone based cabs like Muru were already operating in India since 2007 about two years before Uber was even founded and smartphone cabs since 2013. So there was nothing new Uber was bringing to the market. Charge number 2 Uber uses free navigation Google Maps and does not pay Google. Takes money from you for free services provided by Google. 90% of Uber's app work is done by using free navigation application like Google Maps or Waze. So why is Uber using free software to charge you money? It is kind of like paying a third party for making searches on Google. Uber cannot work if Google Maps and Waze not working. Charge number 3 Uber cheats riders with surge pricing. As a rider it is a different thing that you are okay with surge price because you get fleeced only once a week or 3 to 4 times a week. Or it might be the urgency of the situation that justifies you paying more for the ride. But Uber tries to justify it as a permanent solution by quoting the demand and supply humbug. Many Uber drivers have testified that they have been in surge areas along with other regular taxis, non-smartphone, and other competing call cabs, and all of them running around the blocks empty in search of passengers. Then the Uber driver gets ride request from out of town or 10 kilometers back from where he came from. Such surge is of no use for either parties. Surge areas can also be artificially created by Uber by manipulating its servers. Surge pricing is unethical in transportation whatever the circumstances. Earlier two drivers used to hike their prices during flooding, strikes or riots. This was when there was threat for the taxis and the driver's life yet people were not happy with the surge prices. But today every single day Uber uses surge to extract more from passengers using sugar-coated demand supply humbug theory. Charge number 4 Uber takes 25% share on sale price which is the taxi fare and not share on profit. 
If fare for 30 km is Rs 400 Uber takes away Rs 100, 25%, and leaves only Rs 300 to the driver which is completely unfair business practice. Because this includes his operating cost like car installment, fuel cost, maintenance cost, insurance cost, driver salary, car owner profit. Anything over this has to be shared by partners in agreed percentage. But Uber prefers to take the share on sale price instead of share on profit. So whether the taxi fare is profitable or loss irrespective of that Uber will always be in profit. No partnership anywhere in the world takes percentage share based on the sale price. Profit sharing is done on profits not on sales. Charge number 5 Uber increases standards and reduces fares but still takes away 25% of taxi fare. Uber regularly drops rates to almost half thus the fare for 30 km comes down to Rs 200, instead of Rs 400, and Uber shamelessly takes away Rs 50, 25%. Now the driver is left with only Rs 150 and a loss of Rs 150 which he will have to pay from his own pocket. Uber tells him they will pay the remaining Rs 150 as incentive if he accepts all call requests. Whether the driver accepts all calls or not, Uber straight away refuses to pay the driver citing non-performance by driver and that he did not accept all ride request. Charge number 6. Uber splits the driver's earned revenue into two parts and demands him to fulfill even more task to get his already earned revenue. This is the Ponzi part where Uber refuses to pay driver's earned income citing some rule or the other. This rupees 150 which Uber says is incentive is actually the loss in business created because of reduced fare and nothing else. Only Uber can blame itself for lowering rates and inviting loss. Uber has very skillfully passed this loss on to the driver and car owner and blames them for not achieving targets to get the incentive. You can even see how Uber CEO Travis Kalanick blames the Uber driver in the now famous YouTube video. This is not incentive but loss in business that Uber promised to make good so it is actually loss support incentive. Why does the car driver and owner have to suffer for Uber's aggressive pricing strategy? Uber promised lowering prices will get more profits for the drivers and car owners. This is not the case. Today nobody is even able to pay monthly installment of their car and because of that the thousands of drivers have gone on strike. Uber reduced their prices challenging the taxi fare fixed by the government of India. This difference of Rs 150 in loss support incentive rightfully and legally belongs to the driver and has been swindled by Uber using illegal means. Charge number 7 Uber asks driver to drive more hours to earn what they earned before Uber reduced prices. It's just like the statement Marie Antoinette made eat cake if you cannot afford bread. There are three parts to this. 1. It is physically impossible to do more than 20 rides in 12 hours. The shift of each driver is duration of 8 to 12 hours after which the vehicle is passed to the next driver. Two. Uber has no right to ask the driver to do 40 rides in 12 hours which is to double his car miles and operating expenses every hour to earn exactly what he was getting before Uber dropped prices. 3. By asking drivers to complete more rides per hour Uber is encouraging speeding and breaking of traffic laws and endangering drivers and pedestrian lives. Wonder by what logic Uber expects the driver to get more profit from reduced fares. Duh! Does that mean Uber can make more profit by reducing their profit percentage from 25% to 5%? What is good for geese should also be good for gander right? Uber has around 200,000 drivers in Delhi itself and from them it takes away Rs 500 daily as commission. This is about Rs 10 crores. From all over India. Uber could be collecting about Rs 300 crores, about 45 million US dollars, daily. This is about the size of a super hit Bollywood film. Uber earns this amount every single day, 
that too without much investment. Is it surprising Uber CEO Travis Kalanick has become one of the richest men on earth? Uber is the mother of all scams. Do you have a friend or a relative who uses Uber? Pass this clip to them. Or pass this on to your Uber driver it might save him from bankruptcy.